Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number five in the Business Logic Vulnerabilities module titled Low Level Logic Flaw. All right, let's get started. This lab doesn't adequately validate user input. You can exploit a logic flaw in its purchasing workflow to buy items for an unintended price. To solve the lab, buy a lightweight leap leather jacket. You can log into your own account using the following credentials and we're given credentials to a regular user account. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit a logic flaw in the purchasing workflow so that we could buy this jacket for an unintended price. All right, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. Uh, you'll also notice over here that I am using the professional version of Burp and the reason I'm doing that is because I will be needing to use uh, the intruder functionality. An intruder is extremely slow in the community edition and so you will likely need the professional version for this lab. So the first thing that we're going to do is click on my account and then log in with the credentials that we were given. So the password was Peter, hit login and then go to home. Notice over here, as usual, we only have $100 worth of credit and the jacket costs 1337 So we go down and then add to cart. And then we go to our cart right over here. And you could see the total again is much higher than the store credit. Now, if we look at the post request when we add it to the cart, you could see over here it takes in three parameters, the product ID, the redirect, and the quantity. Now let's assume we tried everything that we had tried in the previous labs and none of those uh, exploits worked. So the next thing that you could try is you could always see if the application accepts a really large number of input. And so what we're going to do over here is we're going to send this to repeater. And in here, let's make this a little bit bigger. In here, let's say two hit send. So you could see over here, if we reload the page, you should have an extra two items of the jacket. All right, let's say 100. Hit send and see if the application accepts that. It does not. So it says invalid parameter quantity. So it doesn't accept um, the 100, but, ex but it accepted two. So my guess is it doesn't allow for three digits to be in this variable. So it only allows two digits. So let's try the maximum number of two digits, which is 99, hit send, and it accepts that. So you should see over here an extra 99 jackets in your application. All right, so what we're gonna try right now is we're going to try and add an insanely large amount of jackets and see how the application is gonna respond to that. So at some point, the application should stop me from adding jackets. Otherwise, it might cause some kind of crash in the back end that will allow the application to behave in a weird way that we could potentially exploit. So to do that, let's remove everything from my cart. And let's send this to Intruder. Now in Intruder over here, we're going to click on Clear so that it doesn't fuzz any of these parameters. We're going to keep this at 99. So what happens is with every request, it's going to add 99 jackets. And then we're going to go to payloads right over here. And we're going to select null payloads because we're not actually fuzzing any specific parameter. And then we're going to say continue indefinitely. What that means is it's going to keep performing this request indefinitely until we stop it. And the idea is that we're going to keep reloading the page to see if the application responds in a weird way that we could potentially exploit because it has such a large number of uh, jackets. Now, um, to make sure that uh, we could actually view the requests, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new resource pool and we're going to say the maximum concurrent requests is one at a time, just so that it doesn't perform 10,000 requests and we can't tell when the application started to behave in a weird way. All right, so let's start the attack. Now you could see over here, it's performing the requests. Let's make this a little bit smaller and uh, reload our cart. So, so far we have 1,683, so we'll keep reloading and you can see this number is getting pretty large and uh, the application so far hasn't stopped me from adding all these jackets. 
So we'll keep reloading until we see something that is odd. And just a quick note, I've solved this lab before and it took a really long time to figure out what the vulnerability is and even longer to exploit the vulnerability. So this is gonna be a fun video. So we continue to reload. So far, it's allowed me to buy over 10,000 jackets and you could see they cost an insane amount. but nothing that we can exploit yet. And again, I'm continuously reloading the page. And look at that, we get a negative number. So let's go to attack and pause. Now, if we go over here, we've done 173 requests. So that would be 173 times 99 jackets. That's as many jackets as we have, which is over here. And at some point it looped back to a negative number. So in the back end, it didn't have any validation on what the largest number could be. And so it looped back to a negative number. And now the more we add in the application, so if we say 127 and we hit enter, this number uh, decreased because it's adding 1,337 to this negative value. So the more we add, the more this number is going to decrease. And the idea over here is to add enough jackets right now, since it looped back, to add enough jackets to get this to a number that is negative but manageable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add other items in the application that don't have this price in order to get it to a positive number that is within our store credit, which is $100. Now, one mistake and we have to redo the whole exploit. So I'm hoping we don't make any mistakes in the exploit, but it's very easy to make mistakes. So we're gonna copy this first of all and do some math to figure out how many jackets we're gonna need to add in order to get it to a small number that we can manage. So this is the cost of the jacket in a negative value and the cost of an individual jacket is 1337. So that's equal to this number over here. Now we are adding 99 jackets at a time. And so we're going to do this divided by 99, which means that we should be able to perform 150 requests to get this to a number that is a little bit more manageable for me so that I could figure out how to make it positive. So let's go back to intruder over here. And now instead of continue indefinitely, we're going to add, let's say 145 payloads, which means 99 times 145 jackets. And we're going to start the attack. So right now, every time we load, you should see the number decrease. And hopefully it'll decrease to something that is manageable. And then we're going to switch to manually adding uh, those jackets just so that we don't risk making a mistake and having to start over. Okay, so I fast forwarded the videos so that you don't have to see me continuously reload the page. Now we're at about $590,000 uh, and again in the negative value. And so if we go back to Burp and we did 145 and we were allowed to do 150. So we're going to switch to doing this uh, manually. Over here, we're going to add another 99. So let's hit send and reload it. So that's one. I'm going to add another one, so we're at two. I'm going to add another one, so we're at three. And I'm a bit weary about adding a fourth one. So let's copy this and do the math again to confirm that we're on the right track. So one, three, three, seven. So that's 144 and 144 is definitely less than 99. And so we should be able to do one more before it becomes positive. So hit send. And we're at 61,386.96. All right, so if we copy this and divide that by 1337, that's equal to uh, 45. So that would be equivalent to about 45 or 46 uh, jackets. And so we definitely can't perform this request over here because it adds 99 uh, jackets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and add 
let's say 30 jackets, hit send, and see what that number came up to. So we're at 21276. Let's copy that and do the math again. And again, I'm doing the math every time because I really don't want it to reset to a large number. This way we'll have to do the exploit all over again and I don't want to do that. So we're good for 15.9 jackets. And so I'm going to say 14 jackets, hit send and see what we got to. Okay, so 2,558, so we're actually good to add one more jacket before it becomes positive. Hit send. All right, so we're at 1,221.96. And so what I'm going to do is instead of add a jacket, which will, I believe, be bigger than $100, it's 1337 and this is just 1221. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to home and find an item that I can use. So let's say the $19 one. Let's add that to our cart. Let's view the cart. And I'm going to use this item over here to get this to a positive number that is between 0 and 100. So let's take this and divide it by 19. And there's a lot of math going on in this exploit. This is actually a really clever exploit. So we've got 63. So we could add 63 of this item over here. So we're going to go to proxy and we're going to look for the request that was used to add this item to the cart. And it was this one right over here. We're going to send this to repeater. And over here, what we're going to do is we're going to add, let's say, 60 of this item. Hit send. And we're at 62.96. So this is definitely a manageable number. Let's add two of this item again. Now we're at 24. And then let's add two more. Hit send. And we're at 13.04. So we're finally at a number between 0 and 100. So we should be able to afford it using our store credit right now. And so when I click on place order, it should order for me all 32,000 plus of this uh, jacket over here and 65 of the backdrops. So let's click on place order. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. I'm so glad that I didn't have to do this multiple times in the video and it worked from the first time. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise. Usually we script the exercise in Python. However, I really don't want to spend the time to figure out the exact math for my script to work. And so I'm going to leave this as an exercise for you to do if you're interested in scripting it. All right, in the next lab, we're going to look at a more complex case of a business logic vulnerability. If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.